Is that funny? Like in America, guys, it means girls too. Guys is. Yeah. Hey, guys. I guess. Like, but then when girls like um, like talk to a bunch of girls, they can also say, hey, guys. But when a guy talks to a bunch of guys, they can't say, hey, girls. I call my girls gals. Like I do the too. mom's group. That yeah, you call them gals. gals. I feel like in California, we say guys. And in the South, they say y'all. It's the yep. same thing. Guys and y'all. And May calls women chicks. Chicks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm nice jealous of chicks. people that they get to use y'all. It's such an easy way to like address something and then i don't want i can't i have no right to use it why because i'm from california um can't be say y'all you're from the south of california what would you say oh do you You say hey you guys hey hey, (laughs) you guys doing later (laughs) what are y'all doing are we filming Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Pontius Show. And um, I'm Chris. I'm May. And we have a very special guest today. You know who he is. Wait, who am I? Dave. <laughs> Dave England. Thanks for coming, Dave. Hey, Super stoked. For having me. And Dave, I'm so excited. Every time I see you, I pretty much like to show you like an axe or a knife or some sharp, dangerous thing that I have. Because, you know, you like that stuff, too. I do like that stuff, too. Hey. I brought from Nepal, I brought my kukri knife. Ooh, I like it, but I'm scared. I'm so scared. Chris, <laughs> yeah, this thing's rad. Horrible. It's like a giant razor it's blade. It's so scary. It pretty much is. It's gnarly. It's a, it's a, oh, God, this thing's amazing. The, the Gurkhas would carry these, you know, like they were like the commandos. And like they would be even still to this day, they're part of the British Army. And, you know, they're fearsome. It's, it's actually said that whenever they draw their kukri, they can't. It has to draw blood. So if, if they're not even fighting somebody, they have to cut themselves. Fortunately, I'm not a Gurkha. I might cut myself on accident. I could see where that was going. <laughs> Why does it have to be cocked forward like that? Just that much closer to cutting someone? It's like the cutting angle, uh-huh. like chopping like angle. Less travel. It's got really nice flesh. detailing on the blade. Yeah. It's beautiful. Pummel. Where'd you get it? It's from Nepal. No, where did, where did, did you get I it? I got it from a guy that gets some from Nepal. But I, I spent a month in Nepal, actually, looking for the abominable snowman, the Yeti. And uh, I knew before we left that we'd never find him. This was before Jackass even. Yeah, actually, when I came back, the first episode of Jackass had aired. But uh, yeah, we camped out in the in the mountains and in the jungle for a month. Wait, it looks like there's something in there besides the knife. Yeah. Oh, wait. Two other come knives. with two other knives. They come with a, a little handy side knife. It's adorable. So cute. It's so cute. And, Can you not hold it? And, 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 the ca- and, and one to sharpen. One's not sharp to hone your blade. So wow. All uh, Kukri's genuine ones usually have these. Never see anything like it. Choof. Yeah. Choof. <laughs> These are amazing. They're amazing. It reminds me of Indiana Jones. Yeah, right? some, like something that some of the bad guys yeah. might have come after them with Kirk, with uh, Kukri's. Oh, Kukri. They're so rad. Anyway, wait, wait, wait. Before I forget, I brought you guys something. Oh. It's, I made these. I was gonna sell them, but selling things is really hard. So I just made them, and I'm just giving them away. It's so, called Whizever. It's the perfect oh. pink. You know, oh my gosh! It goes in there really easy. But oh. there's more. Oh. Come on out of there. There's something really cool inside Dave. here. Dave, you should, should go back to selling there. these. There this go. is so good. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, there's two of them. Oh. And what? It's, it's a, a girl adapter. Oh, oh that's <laughs> rad. Just right for your vagina. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool with the purple and It's the... like a USB oh, for your vagina. We could use those. Yeah. Well, there's only that's so rad. Right. I'm so stoked. Thank you Wait, so much, you Dave. Why would, you, why would you throw that on the ground? Because there's another one in there. I actually put two in there. You don't need two. What kind of heat jug you running over there? It's, it's got a it's got a solid go both ends? it's got a solid close actually yeah, yeah i i had one that i got from a sailor shop and if you tightened it like too much it would untighten and my yeah. pee went everywhere why would they ever make them like that that's why i I'm made the whatever <laughs> you know with pee wherever whenever you want super stoked this is amazing yeah. i know a lot of people that could use this yeah, we are I mean, we are some of those like people everybody yeah, everybody. It's rad. Pretty much. Everyone roll around in the your vehicle. You can stomp on that. It will not break. You can run over it with a car. But you can't share it, really. Can you? Um, I mean, you can. I don't need Depends. There's no rules. Chris, Chris, There's, you, no, rules. There's no set rules. Oh, you know. Oh, my God. After that surfing. <laughs> surfing. Oh, yeah. I bring my. Yeah. I just remember the best pee jug story ever. We were filming the Seattle skimboarding for Jackass. Remember uh-huh. that? And we were coming back from Seattle to Portland, which is like a three hour drive. And we had. Stopped and got pizza and beer. So, like, I had a full belly of beer. I was like laying down in a 15 passenger van. 
kind of half asleep. I'm like, oh, I got to pee. I fished around on the bottom of the floor and I found a um, empty water bottle, like one of those Aquafinas with a bigger thing. So I put, put my wiener inside. I was just laying there. I was going to start peeing and I tilted it back and it just, the liquid in it went all over me. I'm like, oh, wait, smells minty. What is the, why would it smell minty? It was because this guy had been using it for a spittoon. It was my spittoon. And so I had another two hour drive with just drenched with Chris's spit. dip spit all over my dick. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. at the time, I was a heavy tobacco chewer. And yep. uh, yeah, the spit went all over his dinner. God, it's, it's bad enough when you drink someone else's, even your own chew spit. But uh, yeah, all over your wiener. Oh. That's that's intimate to say the least. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, I'm sorry, Dave. Burn? Was it warm? Um, I, it was so many years ago. All I remember is being grossed out, horrified. Oh, didn't someone else get your Did spittoon I care? juice? Uh, you thought it was the best thing ever. Hey, you're very <laughs> didn't someone else get spittoon it. juice in their eye and complain? Oh, about it? that was Bam at the 24 Hour Takeover when odd. Zap Galfonekis was interviewing everybody. Before I didn't know who he was at the time, but we were I, they were doing a, a between two ferns thing, and um, at some point, like Bam tried to escape, like he was tired, he wanted to go to yeah. bed, and like everyone like caught him and wrestled him down. And Zach Galfonakis, who was chewing tobacco while interviewing everyone, his chew spit went into Bam's eye, and Bam like panicked and started crying. And <laughs> his mom got all mama bear too. April was like, "He needs to get some rest, is what he needs." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, like he's tired. Oh God, ridiculous. <laughs> I remember once I was snowboarding with this this uh, real gnarly dude named Quinn Sandoval. He were, were um, like overall snowboarding. It was like a trucker snowboarder in the 90s. Uh-huh. And we're hiking. It was all windy and cold. And uh, I looked down. He's like 20 feet below me. He's looking down too. He spits out his dip spit. And he goes <laughs> all the way back up. <laughs> right my goggles. And it froze under my goggles. So gross. It froze there. <laughs> I was like trying to pick it off. I'm like, fuck. I just, it, this dip spit stuck there. Yuck. So you were a pro snowboarder for many years, like three or four years. And uh, I uh, I heard a story about you on a trip. I think you were in Norway and in in a blizzard in a taxi cab with Ben Pappas. And um, all all in Sweden. Oh, right. So what happened at the Globen? So what happened? Uh, There was a big event in Stockholm at the indoor arena called the Globen, which is amazing. It's like this ball. Oh yeah. And they blew all the snow and had a giant jump. And they had a vert ramp for skaters, so it was snow and skating. And uh, Danny Way, Colin McKay, Ben Pappas, and I think Taz Pappas were all you know together. And somehow I ended up with them, and we were in a taxi, and uh, I just wouldn't stop making fun of Ben Pappas's Australian accent. Were you in Darf mode? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. and you're, you were doing that. Darf wouldn't quit <laughs> making fun of Ben yeah. Pappas the way he spoke, and. Uh, <laughs> and he kept warning me. He's like, I'm, not, I'm just not having a good day and I just don't need this. And, and I just kept pushing on and doing it. And finally, we got in a fight in the cab and the cab driver just pulled over the side of the road, kicked all of us out in the middle of nowhere. We're, we're just on the side of the road with a blizzard, like you said, in the middle, dead of winter in Sweden. After and, fighting. Well, after, during fighting. So the fight was not over and the, I lost really bad. I'm not a good fighter at all. And Ben Pappas, I'm, he beat me up so bad. I've never been beat up that. The whole side of my face was swollen up. And uh, the white part of my eye was red for like three months, like all the way red. <laughs> well, you did play a big part in getting him kicked out of a cabin in a blizzard. Yeah. I mean, I half deserved it, I guess. I don't Darf's know. not a good fighter. If, if it was regular Dave, you could, you, could have held your, you could have held your ground. I don't think no, so. I'm not Maybe. a good fighter at all. But yeah. anyways, and then the rest, that was the first day of a week trip. And so the rest of the week, I mean, we, the next day I was like, I'm sorry. And he said he was sorry. So we were fine. But, I, you know, Dave I had doesn't to go look like a fighter. He, he no, I don't think I've ever won a fight ever. Yeah. I've never seen regular Dave start a fight. No. Darf, I've seen, one time I was at a Halloween party in, in Oregon that you were at like one of our friends' house, and all of a sudden, like something gnarly hit me in the back of the head, and I turn around, and there's you, just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I was like, what did you, I do? I don't you did that? You hit me like, With like, what? A, maybe your crazy weird punch that you do that hurts really bad, like, you had like a in the back of the head with no warning though, like for wow, no reason, sorry. like, in a, in a, I was like, oh no, I, I think I kicked your ass for it. I think I threw you onto a table. You probably don't remember the night, but yeah, I. I uh, it really opened the door <laughs> for retaliation, <laughs> but I wasn't mad. Even like it was just like, oh, but God, I was, I, I was a little mad. <laughs> I, I was listening to while I was driving down here today. I was listening to a, a previous podcast where you were talking about how you should no one should fight 
Rick Kosick. Oh yeah, no. and uh, I had I learned the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he beat the living shit out of me, and then drug my face along carpet, <laughs> so I had giant carpet burns all in my face. <laughs> it was horrible. Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. I bet Rick would sit down and go, "Yep, I remember that." Yeah, I've heard him like reflecting on past fights that he's yeah. been involved in, and he's you'd think he'd be more proud, but he's he's yeah. very humble about about his his uh. His power and his then, prowess. Then he comes back with a, he shouldn't have done it in the first place. He shouldn't have done you know? it. And, yeah. and, and he's like <laughs> yeah. really proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, he should be. Yeah, he should yeah. be. Yeah. Can't take that away from him. Yeah. So, <laughs> so another time during your snowboard career, I think I remember hearing you were at like a, a trade show for snowboarding and you were at a party and all these people were sitting around like a little cup dipping their fingers in some liquid. What happened, yeah. Dave? It was uh, every, once a year. I don't even know if they still do it, but back in the 90s, once a year, there was a giant trade show in Las Vegas for snowboarding and other, you know, like geeking and all that crap too. But anyway, so at night, it was just debauchery and uh, a, gr- a table of 12 or 15 of my friends were passing around this little cup and taking a little sip around, you know, the table. I'm like spying on them from the next table. I was already, you know, dark, dark. Drug, very drunk. And I'm like, I'm going to grab that and drink the whole thing and run. So I did that. I grabbed it. Drank the whole thing, threw the cup down and ran. Everyone was yelling at me and I ran off so they couldn't, you know, I don't know what they would have done, but <laughs> I didn't want to stick around and find out. <laughs> then like a half hour later, I was completely sober. I'm like, what happened? I was so wasted. <laughs> then I started having like really weird thoughts. And they told <laughs> you what you drank. No, in. no, no. But before they told me what it was, like I just, I started thinking that I thought that because I had just come home from a snowboard trip in Chile and I thought that I killed a bunch of kids when I was there. <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, did I kill? They got murdered like a no. bunch of children. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like, why am I thinking this? And finally they told me it was liquid acid oh, and I had shit. like 20 hits of liquid acid. So then once I found that out, I just started, I was like, I'm going to run back home, which was California at the time. <laughs> so I started running and running and the sun's coming up. Finally, I'm like running and the sun's coming up and running towards the sun. I'm like, oh, the sun rises to the east. So I was running deeper into Nevada. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and where did you end up? I ended up in like, residential neighborhood where people are like <laughs> bringing their kids to the bus stop and go to school oh my god <laughs> it was really weird it was like a i got like a half hour uh taxi ride back to the how long did it take for the <laughs> for the acid to wear off oh uh, yeah like a day and a half oh something. my god a day and a half yeah. <laughs> that was the second to the last time i voluntarily took acid <laughs> it's a crazy thing to happen yeah to someone <laughs> I'll drink all their One time water. I took acid, I just, it was like it was never going to go away. It was like two days in, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm like this. For, this is it for the rest of my life. I'm never coming back. I'm that gone. Was, that was the last time I, I ever took acid on purpose. I think one time I accidentally got ghost. <laughs> what? I've always heard, like, don't, uh, you know, don't look in the mirror on acid. Oh, yeah, or mushrooms. You did it on mushrooms, right, in Japan? Yeah, I, I actually made a mirror. point to, like, shave on mushrooms, oh. maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, that oh, I didn't. Not only did I look in the mirror on mushrooms. Actually, that was a different time. I, I didn't not only look in the mirror on mushrooms. I I it was at a bar and and uh, Rick and and Steve-O had, had found like they, they actually sold like there were stands in Okinawa to buy mushrooms that would sell them. They weren't illegal. And I I'd, I'd had a couple of drinks in me and uh and so I it sounded good to eat them. And then so I did this move, the standing reverse diarrhea in the mirror on mushrooms. So not only did I look in the mirror on mushrooms, but I stood up backwards and diarrhea in the toilet and uh yeah I, I just remember looking back at rick filming it and he's just also on mushrooms like ah, where's and, uh, that footage oh god that that we've talked about unearthing the dreaded mushrooms in okinawa footage oh please but, and oh, then they took us to like a, a weird like escort bar and all these like women like the because the guy that was our like host in okinawa like wanted to show everyone a good time so we're on mushrooms. The last place you want to be, and all these like the ladies that work there like swarm you, like hi hi, and they just look like little elves like terrorizing you, like ah, get away from me. And, and, and um, we told them that Rick was the boss and he was very rich, and so then they all surrounded him. <laughs> Next thing I knew, Stevo and I are on stage. We they had strippers. We got jealous of of, of the them attention. being able to strip. Yeah, the attention. <laughs> so Stevo and I got naked and, and we started doing strip strip a uh, strip tease for. <laughs> Basically for our bros and a, yeah, and a, and bunch, a bunch of, of businessmen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Steve-O somehow balanced some giant like table on his chin naked. And then 
Then uh, Steve O lost his shorts, and I I looked over and I saw Steve O like all paranoid, hidden Did he like in a boot. Too much? <laughs> I lost my he lost shorts. his shorts. That's something my dad would say. He lost his shorts. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no I problem. Yeah, but yeah, God, hallucinogenics are terrible. Oh, terrible! <laughs> they're terrible. But they're so fun at yeah. the same time. Yeah, you live, you learn. I don't know. It was a fun night. <laughs> but until- <laughs> oh my God! You know what else I did? I I. Uh, so we got back to the hotel or our like place where we were staying and they had these Japanese toilets that have the sprayer. It will spray your buns, spray your vagina if you're a girl. And Steve-O like, um, sat on the toilet to, and he did the sprayer, but he pushed the vagina button and it sprayed his balls. <laughs> and, and so he, in, in, in surprise, he like, lifted his balls up and then the, the water went straight forward. So the whole, the, the whole bathroom floor was wet. So later that night, as I was trying to get some sh- 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 shut eye, I didn't know where to pee because I was disgusted by what Steve had done to the bathroom and because uh, he was pooing. And um, <laughs> so I didn't know where else to pee. Steve O, um, right after that, peed onto his own stomach while laying down on his bed. So, in my logic at the time, I thought, well, he doesn't mind having pee on his bed. So I peed on his bed that he was sleeping in. <laughs> Did you pee on him? No, just on his bed, but I guess it soaked down onto his backpack and. You know, it, it caused some problems. And so I went back on the couch and sat there because I was afraid to pee on the balcony because it was really high up and the mushrooms were still taking effect. And, uh, and I didn't want to go out because I didn't want to look at the big drop and, you know, think I could fly or anything terrible like that. So Steve-O comes crawling out. You know, his bed was soiled because I did a big pee because I'd been holding it for a long time, not knowing where to pee. You could have used one of these. Yeah. If I had a, the whizzer, what's it called? Whizzever. If I had the whiz ever, I would have been fine. But uh, unfortunately, you hadn't invented it yet. <laughs> and, uh, so he comes out wrapped in his back, in his wrapped in his blanket, comes crawling out with a smile on his face, lifts his blanket, and just kind of pees all over the floor there. And I was like, oh, now there's pee everywhere. So, God. Then, then uh, of course, the next morning we flew back to Tokyo and then onto the United States, where where you know they were reluctant to allow me onto the plane. After you know yeah. my my rocky flight on the way to Tokyo, involved urine as well. Could use the whatever yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah, you could. Yeah. You just need. You needed the whatever your whole life. Hey, yeah. let's say Pontiosaurus fits into the wizard. Box. Oh, there. Thank you. That's a great let's idea. See. Oh yeah, oh. it'll fit. See, that's the see? ultimate see? test. The one that is the ultimate test. And there's space. Fits. Hey, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> So I can use the Warhammer confidently. It's not completely yeah. based on, no, it's the not war- based. but it does have a big head like the yeah. Warhammer, like a Warhammer, a mighty Warhammer. I, I don't know why this reminded me of this. And now I don't even know if I could even say this right after that horrible segue. But remember when I had one of my kids and then I sent you the like <laughs> first photo of my child yeah. ever. And you like sent back, and you're it like, it looks Clyde. just like this. And it was, yeah, it was Clyde. He's 11 now. So this baby photo. I the swaddle. You, and you're like, it reminds me of this. And you sit back, and it was a like baby Jesus butt plug. <laughs> and it looked, looked just like my kid. My kid looked like a little Jesus butt plug. <laughs> I couldn't be upset or anything. Like, damn it. it. Yes, it looks like. It was like you, a group text. Yeah, thing. you said that early in the morning. Yeah. And and we were like looking for this butt plug photo. I was very, uh, I was very like conflicted of whether I should send the, the picture of the baby Jesus butt plug. But I, the, the crazy thing is, like, how I even knew it existed. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you how. Instantly referenced it. <laughs> it was from a book that Chuck Pal- Palna, um, the guy who wrote Fight Club, wrote. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I, like, searched in for the book, and all of a sudden, like, a picture like that popped up on the internet, to my surprise. But, yeah, when you sent me that picture of, of Clyde and the Swaddle, it looked, it, it looked just like... Yeah. Sorry. I'll post Spitting that image. up. I didn't invent it. identical. <laughs> It was a mold. It was a mold of your child. Oh, yeah. I sent that to my whole family. Oh, yeah. Bro. yeah. All the <laughs> grandmas got to see it. Congratulations. They're, they're stoked. People come up some, with some crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. My face. <laughs> it's a crazy world. I, uh, I actually, I heard, I remember, like, you know, you're known for pooing. What? You told me this one <laughs> story about you using a public restroom, like, driving down from Portland to L.A. And, um, like, weren't you, like hovering over like a toilet that maybe like i don't know if it was broken or it was full of pee or something like that and someone opened the door because you thought it was locked and, and they surprised you and you and did it went you, everywhere and, you, and it went and it was you, the place it was a bar called the jet oh no <laughs> ready so like i just it was with my wife 
and she's from Seattle. So we were right outside of Seattle. I'm like, I have to go right now. So she decided that was the best place she knew. She's like, oh, there's a bar right here. She pulls off the road and I go and there's just crowded bar. I'm like, I need to use the restroom. They're like, we need to see your ID. And there's a, there's a cover charge. And I'm like, I don't have any money. I just got to use your bathroom. So like they, I'd already made it very known that I was going only to go use the bathroom. They <laughs> totally knew it was me. I shit everywhere. Yeah. Somebody opened the door and like I shifted my weight and like, and it just went plah, like everywhere. It and, just, uh, it helped you loosen. Oh, wow. I jetted at the jet. Did you fall and did your butt fall into the toilet? Uh, no, no. My butt didn't fall into the toilet. Oh, no. Every time we go by there now, usually in, usually I'm with my mother-in-law. Yeah. Shauna always has to point out, look, there's her Dave shit all over the fucking <laughs> bathroom with the jet. So how'd you okay. deal with it after the poo went everywhere? It was just a mess. I, yeah, I had to pull my pants up with the mess and then. Oh, you didn't wipe? I, I mean, there wasn't even wipe. Oh, what was the man. point? What was the point? What do you think? I, yeah, I had Did, to get out of there. It was a little sweaty. I had something wrong with me. So do you uh, think they saw the poo? And, oh, but, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy was in a panic. They ran in there. And then, like, <laughs> and, yeah, someone had to be like, I think he saw jackass or something. Oh, That's no. the last time they're ever going to let someone yeah, who doesn't pay learned, a cover charge. They <laughs> they learned learned jackass. Had you paid your cover charge? No. He didn't even pay his cover charge. Oh um, my yeah. god! Only you, Dave. Only yeah. you. It's amazing. You're amazing. I I remember like vaguely hearing that story, and like I had to ask you about it to get my facts straight. God, I, I wonder. Just, God, so so you you all, every once in a while you're near that bar, and yeah, it's right by my mother in law's house. When we go to visit, my <laughs> wife always brings it up. She's like, "Look, there's the jet." You don't dare go in there for a, for. It a, went out of business. Oh, that really bad. I don't know if I had a hand in that. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since Dave, oh my god, yeah, they never no. quite recovered. It sounded like they were they were like a little strict. All right, I'm gonna. I have a question for you, Dave. Yeah. I have a question for you. So, um, you guys were filming the intro to Jackass Forever, right? So you and we men were up on the little. Yeah, we were marquee dressed yep. as uh, ushers, ushers, and uh, full polyester suits, and so. The explosions were all real, right? Yeah, they're like, we're going to pull these ropes and it'll yank you out. Then the explosion will go off. Uh huh. It was the other way around. The explosion went off. <laughs> then after the, they Oops. pulled us out of there. Oopsies. And uh, we met, he got a little burn, but I got in this big fireball. And uh, it just, you know, like I said, I was in this polyester suit and it just melted it onto my back. Oh, my oh, God. My arm. Then we're dangling there afterwards off these ropes, and it, I, it just felt like my entire arm was still on fire. So I'm just, you know, That's like, so dangerous. My arm's on fire. My arm's on fire. There's probably nothing in it if it was secondhand, too. I guess. But then, then so then then they're like, you should go to the hospital. And so they take me to the to the hospital, and, uh, you know, they threw all the clothes away. I, I think wardrobe still has that jacket. I kind of uh-huh. like that jacket. But everything else, the hospital threw away because it was all singed. My hair was all singed. I was missing teeth already. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Then, like, then the doctors look at me. They're like, "He's got like head to toe burns," and I'm like, mm, "Actually, most of this is poison oak." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'd had a bad camping trip <laughs> the week before, so then they were just super frustrated. They're like, "Which ones are burns and which ones are poison oak?" I'm like, "I don't know." Like this one, I think, both. And like, oh, then they're just like off food. And you had no two, uh, two yeah, like, at the same time. Those- and no ID, no nothing. ID, and no self. No so they, 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 nothing. I so, heard they thought you were homeless. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm like, yeah, I was just on the Paramount lot making a movie. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> and so they issued me like yucky, like like a like a hoodie and some sweatpants that stunk. I just had the hospital socks, and they're like, all right, you're off to you're you're good to go. Okay. It was during COVID, so they they didn't let anyone from the production go to the hospital. So I'm just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get back to my hotel. And they're like, oh, we'll assign you a social worker. So they find me a social worker. I'm just like all burnt up with poison oak. I'm like working with a social worker. How am I going to get to the hotel? And it's finally some production showed up. And then this guy Daniel from production, he's like, you're not going to believe this. I forgot where I parked. So we're just wandering all over West Hollywood looking for his car. That was a rough day. What a rough day. I had no, at the time, I had no idea what you were going through. That's amazing. Like, and no idea. They thought you were. They thought you were off the streets. But yeah, that burned me real good. But I'm. I'm happy how it turned out. But it looks like, you know, computer generated or something, right? Yeah. Like it it's amazing. Real. It came out Everything amazing. Was real. It was yeah. Real. yeah. All your stunts. And then Everything the next day, with Preston's intro. They just slathered him with all this like anti burn gel. So he's, oh, right. They learned. Yeah. They yeah. learned from their mistake. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. weird how they're like that. Fireball to the yeah. guys. So. Yeah. So so many so many things they do like that. Actually, I was recently talking about. Like when they try, remember when they, we worked, we tried to get my wiener into the mousetrap for so long 
And I knew like why, how many times am I going to have to take a hit to the mousetrap before they want to do a rat trap? And oh, like, yeah, yeah. like they learn from like their mistakes. So like you get hurt so many times just to get set up. Yeah, at our expense. Yeah. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> This is, that's just how it goes. That's how this. That's how this Remember, machine works. Of, yeah, mousetrap. They reminded me of the other one, the cat. When the cat was supposed to attack your. Oh wiener, yeah. The cat just loved your wiener. It was just rubbing all over it. <laughs> yeah, they put catnip with in, um catnip, <laughs> catnip <laughs> all. <laughs> no, I, I put my wiener through the hole where the the crazy cat was, and he ended up loving it. And yeah, he just snuggled much. up with it. Yeah, it was so awkward. They have him though. We're all watching. You're like, uh. <laughs> It's weird. At the time, I wasn't even worried about the cat attacking me. Like I should have been. Oh, that would be horrible. Cat horrible. Fever on your dick. Ooh. All those animals, like in the, they, they did so many dick ones, and and they're like, we're you know we're gonna keep the best one. The woodpecker, like that one, it pecked it right into the hole, my pee hole. Yeah. That hurt. Yeah, that looked like, horrible. And it, it just looked like a cute woodpecker, yeah. but yeah, it did some damage. Oh, I had that little penis thing. Oh yeah, the yeah, the, yeah. the uh, balsa penis. Yeah, the balsa. The sexy you, Seth card. So many horrible things. You're weird. I can't even believe it. Wieners are hey, tough, works, though. Yeah, it works fine, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We Wiener, wieners are tough. We have a baby and everything. Yeah. We had a baby. Yeah. yeah. Aaron tried to ruin his balls. Oh, my he still God. Complains. He had a baby. His balls still hurt. Really? Yeah. He still com- oh, yeah. he, oh, he, oh, he loves to complain. So, yeah, you he's... got one ball, and you've got four babies. And you never yeah, complain. Right. Yeah, yeah. You never complain, ever. No. You're a little bit. You Speaking... never really did. I think after that, um, the, rope, it, the right. rope with the brick drop. You didn't oh, really man. complain about and, that. And you actually thought you were going to gain some some inches in your penis on yeah. that one. Did you? Did, did. Some you see before? What well, you lost in girth, yes. you gained in inches. Yeah. The next day, it was pretty wild looking, like yeah. purple. I always reflect back on that. I was just, I was so happy about how bruised my dick was. I was showing it to everybody, yeah. and it's like in this day and age, you're not supposed to show your and how long your, your penis. I was like, look, look, it's all bruised. You like, showed like, all of us in the listen. morning for breakfast. And how long your penis was stretched. Yeah, you must have been proud of that too. Yes, yeah, yeah. What, not what only is bruised, that? But big. Yeah. What's that bit called? The the, the brick um, drop. Brick drop. Yeah, yeah and and they got that, that the first day oh, of the. It was first, so fun. Like 9 a.m. first day of filming. Yeah, and yeah. it was totally random yeah. who who's, was attached to the brick. But yeah, Dave, having only one ball, it didn't hold the rope on yeah, securely. It slipped midway through and got me mid-chef. Ooh, you boy. also did the um, the compression thing. What was the one where it, the two two pieces where you played uh, oh, ping pong with... with oh, yeah. yeah. That medieval yeah. Latin penis thing. flatter. Yeah. That didn't even hurt. Isn't that amazing? Right? How weird is that? You can flatten your dick all the way to like paper thin and mm-hmm. didn't hurt a bit didn't hurt and at all yeah. it, it looked so cool yeah it looked great and your penis looked enormous next to poopies yeah oh yeah poopies muff that was well, insane well poopies i think for one bit i saw him he'd shaved but he he only shaved the top he, he didn't shave the bottom yeah so yeah it looked a little weird it was like a mullet like <laughs> of, of his wiener like it's like when someone has no mustache but a beard. Yeah. <laughs> Which, what is He's it? like, oh, bro, my, that, that's like my dick looks so Lincoln, small right? next is to yours. He, he, Abraham Lincoln he had a beard no but no mustache. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's called. That's, that's called. what he had. He had yeah, Abraham he had, Lincoln below the belt. All right, there you go. So speaking of Aaron complaining, I once, we were doing a live show in Canada, and Aaron came walk after um, my set on stage. I, he passed by me complaining that you'd yanked him off stage with a vaudeville cane, what I spent happened? All afternoon, we we got to the like you know we were going from town to town all over Eastern Canada. So we got in like two p.m. and we're right across the street from this surplus store. So I'm like, I know what they're gonna have, what I need. So I went and I bought these bamboo poles, some duct tape, and this big like hooked piece of metal, and I duct taped it all and made this giant hook, like a cane hook, and and brought it to the venue. And when Aaron went up, and when I've had enough of him, <laughs> like, I like literally, it worked so perfectly. I wrapped it around him, and yeah, it was like it was like twelve feet long. So I was like way off stage, and just pulled him off stage, and he did not like that. No, I think the crowd did. Yeah, yeah. he was on set for like two minutes, though. It seemed the, like a lot. <laughs> his set could like seem a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, but then, so then later that evening, he was still pretty pissed about it, and uh, we were we had our merch tables out, or we signing stuff at the merch tables. And he just sucker punched me right in, like, right. Here. I'd said something. I think I said something. That no, set him you're, off. Push, a you're pushing the table oh. up against him. Oh, it's and pushing he hated him. It. frustrating him. Yeah. And then, anyway, so then he punched me and I, with his rings on. Yeah, yeah. his rings. And I, like, I think I have a he scar. He started from it. bleeding. Yeah, it was horrible. And then, so I jumped over the table and the merch went everywhere. And in the ruckus, someone used that as a, as a distraction to steal a giant 
box of Wee Man's merch. Yeah. It's so double then, extra now. Our, our, our tour almost Triple. ended that Triple. night. Yeah. It almost ended that, that night. Day. It was yeah. just the morale was so yeah. down. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and yeah, and it was there was like hundreds of people like you know doing the meet and greet with us. Yeah. Like so, it was so awkward. Like for especially for the security guys, like having to deal with breaking up the fight between two of the performers that night yeah. <laughs> and and uh yeah they felt bad about it but they had to subdue you because you you when when he punched you you saw red yeah I was in a, crazy. yeah you know wait, rightfully you so you kind of did this he's a yeah. unique punch. Is i call a haymaker when you go like this what kind of you, you're dave has this really unique punch where he like he does it over his head yeah, yeah. like a haymaker is like a very wide punch yeah, I think but it, it looks of, ridiculous but it scratching. hurts I grew up without a dad at a young age so <laughs> I think um, Aaron had a couple of scratches and, and also there was the table to get around or, or all yeah. that yeah he had a he had a unique style of fighting but, but he gave you ice afterwards oh yeah we we made up right so afterwards nice. yeah they, and then uh and then like a couple of days later they're the he nursed you uh, they're like we're gonna get we man's stuff back we're like oh, are yeah. you kidding yeah. it's long gone and Lo and behold, a few we days later, back. we rolled back through that town, and they're like, it's behind this dumpster in this alley, and there it was. Yep, they anonymously oh, they, no, they returned made, it. They made a fake Facebook account yeah, in well, order to text to, us yeah. and yes, say, wow. well, you know, we're going to return it. I knew how to, I knew who to talk to. To I had a feeling who would be connected to the the uh, really the people that did it. Yeah, you know, we those tours we did were really fun. We did that. Canada won two month long Australia, Australia tours. Ones. Those were the best. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. You know, didn't and we you, went to we went to New Zealand. Yeah. New yeah. Zealand. We, went we went to all your over town. Australia. Yeah. Yep. How was living in New Zealand? I the nineties I used to go back and forth between New Zealand and the US for three years. We a girlfriend I had at the time was Kiwi, so we used to do back to back winters. Oh right. It was awesome. I love it down there. Yeah. It's my favorite thing. And I, I I've met so many cool people that I've kept in touch with. I have all these friends. From New Zealand, and uh, I would live there. Oh yeah, New Zealand is awesome. Someone just wrote in and asked us about New Zealand and the good times we've had there. Yes, we've had such good times there. Didn't you actually get lost at sea in New Zealand or stuck at sea? I don't <laughs> I know. Was I was in Fiji. I think I was on one of those lobster fishing or whatever. You know, those, what those no, things? it's like lobster fishing. Lobster fishing, or, or lobster. someone was lobster fishing. Your girlfriend's dad was. Oh, that yeah, that was in New Zealand. Yeah. What happened? So. Um, yeah, my girlfriend at the time, Kate, her dad, Dave, also, he's like, let's go out on my boat, and then and then I'm going to go scuba diving for, for uh, lobsters. Oh. And he's like, uh, and he had his, it's like, just a milk jug floating up, like, that was hooked to his line, so I know where he was. And he's like, you see that milk jug go over 100 meters from you, just bring the boat closer to it. So, like, it gets far away, and uh, I, I start up the boat, won't start, won't start, and it's just like, Finally the, oh, no. finally, the battery died. Oh, no. And I'm like, I just see his little milk jug getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> and then you know, we're out in the open ocean. And luckily, uh, another boat came by. And I'm like, can you tow us over to that thing? And so the guy tows us over. And then he pops up. And I explain the situation. I'm like, maybe these guys can tow us back. He's like, no, she'll be right, mate. And sends them <laughs> off. And and then I'm like, no, your boat is broke. So that for the next five hours, we just got like, you know, there's no place to get away from the sun. We're just all getting sunburned like lobsters. There's a little D, <laughs> yeah, right? There, there was the lobsters in the little thing, and then us lobsters. And he just hated me so bad for that. And uh, yeah, what happened in Fiji? Side. Why do you hate you though? You because like trying- I, I, I guess I just I, I you didn't turn it. The I, there was a way yeah. I could have done it where the, the boat. I was oh, doing it was like I don't flooded yeah, the, the engine. Yeah, oh. I was just like, trying to do supposedly, what he said. yeah, trying to be maybe if he got first service. mate. What happened in Fiji? But, yeah, it was me, him, and then. Has two daughters. <laughs> he was, Wait, so you even, you went to VG afterwards or, yeah. or like? Oh, oh, this is a separate thing. Okay. Hey, you know, back then, like you could, I don't know if they still have it, but you could like from the US to, to uh, New Zealand, you could stop in Fiji for free. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I did just it. do that and just stay there for yeah. like a week. So it was super rad. And this one time I was on one of those like Hobie cast. Is that, am mm-hmm. I saying that right? Like it's like a, it's like a flat platform with a sail. Yeah. It's like the most simple sailboat ever. There's not even like a boat part. Yeah. It's just flat. And uh, I go out, out, out and, uh, and, uh, just can't get the wind no matter what i can't i'm getting farther and farther away from the island i'm starting to panic and then uh the, the guy that one of the guys from the island came back and he's like are you all right and he he took this lady i was with back and he's and like you'll you. be all right tell me what to do <laughs> oh no no no, no. I, i'm telling you right. no, yeah then he first he left me by myself then he brought back this norwegian guy he's like this guy's an expert sailor and he puts him on the boat <laughs> and then the end it was just me and the norwegian guy like paddling with our feet <laughs> and we had to kick it all the way back to the island the norwegian guy wasn't forever. an expert sailor he, he just assumed I, it i told him like the current is just, it doesn't matter how good you are at sailing you're not gonna i you cannot 
beat this thing. And you're on like Tabarua? Yeah, yeah. I, Tabarua. I've been out there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's miles from shore. Yeah. <laughs> that was scary. Remember in on our Australia tour, you know, we went to all these like smaller towns too and everywhere. In, in um, we went to Rockhampton, which is the cattle beef like capital of Australia in and we did a show. Remember at the rodeo place, right? It's the rodeo yeah. place where they actually had rodeos. And um, when Wee Man was on stage, remember the three chicks oh. that came up on stage? They like. They, I remember they, he would bring chicks up on stage. They mauled for, him for a certain reason. They yeah, mauled him. He had all these scratches all over his back. Oh yeah, I do remember now. Yeah. And they stole his belt. But I. I got they wanted back, to get him so naked. They wanted. Yeah, they wanted they to have wanted, their way. They're with well him. on their they way. Really to did. Getting him naked. Yeah. Oh right my there god. On stage. <laughs> yeah, it's gnarly when 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 women aggressively want to. Like get romantic with we men, have their way with them. Remember in Canada when we were like after another show, we were like outside our little RV and this woman came stomping down the street like I'm an f we man, I'm an f we man, and she was like pounding on the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens a lot to him. It does. Mm-hmm. He's a handsome fella. Yep. Um, this you is went on tour with them recently, right? Um, you no, we, went, we did a one stop tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went to Iowa. I'd never been really? to Iowa, and we had a great time. You were doing live shows. We did the one. How was it? It was fun. Yeah. Was did you fly you guys out? I loved doing. Yeah, yeah. They treated us so well. Like it was almost like too good to be true. I was like, oh, just like it. I love catch, your, but there's no catch. I love your live show act. It's you're perfect. waiting for something to happen, right? Well, I'm like, he's not going to pay us. Is what I was waiting <laughs> for to happen. <laughs> <laughs> let's do more shows right guys yeah, yeah live shows are fun that's fun yeah they're super fun that I, one- loved, I love being your security guard kind of thing yep. i love being like the girl the strong man <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's <laughs> our <laughs> man strong man, man. <laughs> and usually next to you you have like in new zealand and australia yeah. you'd have a really big maori dude yeah helping you out yeah <laughs> oh my god this is gnarly but it has to be. It has to be mentioned. Okay. Speaking of our live shows and our meet and greets, remember in Australia when we were after the show, we were doing our meet and greets, and yeah. um, May spotted um, two of the guests at our show, oh. a, a girl and a guy, um, fingering. Yeah, I in line. That. In line. Yeah. Wait, which waiting, was, waiting to meet? Like they were waiting. fingering each other. <laughs> no, the guy was, the guy was uh, from behind. Yeah. Wow. While they're waiting to meet us and shake yeah. hands with us, and oh. May spotted yeah. it. And she's like, yeah. "Oh no, oh no!" Because I, I came from the from the rest from the ladies' room, and I saw it when I was walking up the stairs, and I'm just, uh oh, and I and I kept my eye on the guy, and you know she was all like, hey, you know, and she's like, you? "The boys are not shaking hands with that guy." No, and and so she, I, I remember just, I remind me of it was our, our big Maori security guy that was with us was just cracking up at you, just like disgusted I, at what I, you'd I seen. Pumped, I pumped about. Seven or eight pumps of Purell into his head before he got to meet you guys. Did you like shame him? <laughs> so, like, you shouldn't have been doing I was like, that. Excuse me, excuse me. Pumped did he into know his why you were doing it? The girl and he did. He was holding the Purell and he couldn't touch any of your hands because he yeah, just did all the Purell. loads of Purell. <laughs> like, pumped it, pumped it, pumped it. The girl knew. Yeah. She yeah. looked. Wow. She looked like a little. I mean, think about it. Think about it. What more needs to be said? Yes. You know what's crazy though? I don't remember that at all. And what it makes me think of is how well you remember everything. It's almost a curse, right? You can remember, Chris can remember everything that's ever happened to him in his entire life. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah, it gets, it makes things a little confusing. I've got a lot of information in my head. Yeah. Because I think your brain normally like filters out what you don't need to know and all that. So you can like focus on what's important. But I just like retain. Everything. I really want to go back to Australia. Me too. One yeah, of those. Yeah. I think. I think now would be a little bit different because there was a lot of like, you know, off the cusp stuff that you couldn't do now that we did. It was so fun a few years ago. I think now is a little bit iffy. Didn't you feel like you lived there at the time? Yeah, we were there a month straight. Yeah, yeah. we were so flying we an airplane like every, every day. day. Every day flying an airplane, and me and we met had our skateboards, and they would charge us. On every plane ride for the skateboards. Oh, yeah. So we didn't have to like tape them together. So we only got charged half as much. Yes, it's so smart. Yeah. We're geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> geniuses. No, it was, a, it was a great tour. I, th- I think like yeah. now we it's did it twice. different. We yeah. Did two months, two month long tours, right? I think a lot of people don't realize that you guys couldn't get really that loaded because we were waking up at six o'clock oh, yeah, in the really morning and just. Oh, it's such, it's so much it work. So. And you were driving. You drove. Like I had to drive. Four oh hours. yeah. Well, one night in in Western Australia, I got food poisoning. I oh, was man. puking, and then 
diarrheaing all night long and into the day. And then we did the show and then drove six hours back to Perth to fly across Australia to do another show. Yeah, because we had that group dinner. Yeah. And he was the only one that ordered salad. Yeah, oh, salad. Yeah, and then, um, so when we got back to the hotel, we were sharing the same, um, it was like a hotel apartment, and we shared the same room with Lisa. Lisa was on the other side of the apartment. And Chris wakes up, throws up all over his backpack, and then runs to the bathroom, and explosive diarrhea is all over the bathroom. And he did what and you it did. Just kept it, going at on the and jet. On. It was so pain. I almost wanted to call like the ambulance because yeah. it was such pain from yeah. vomiting for so long. It was gnarly. And but then yeah. he had to drive. Then did the show, and then drove back six hours. Oh, oh my god, that was Geraldton. That's that's what I was about to guess. That I was like, was yeah. that Geraldton? Yeah, Geraldton. it was Geraldton. Yeah, which the, was a neat place. Yeah, it was the most beautiful water. That town. I liked it. Yeah, you we played in the water yeah. at night. Yeah, you guys, the two of you. Yeah, yeah. and there was these awesome great. like blue rays. There's stingrays in there. Yeah, yeah really they were cool. really pretty. I go back there for sure. And and then <laughs> she's like, there's stingrays in there. Why were you swimming at night <laughs> when you couldn't see a stingray? Also, Magnetic Island, which was oh, another was one of my fantastic. favorite places. And I went swimming there, and I was swimming, and I'm like, how come nobody else is out in this pristine, beautiful water? And I get back there, I'm like, it's Tiger Shark Breeding Grounds, mate. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that makes oh my sense. God. I won't be going back in there. No, yeah. speaking of which, like in Sydney Harbour, there's a lot of bull sharks. Like bull oh, sharks yeah. in Australia, it, they, they're predominant. And um, a lot of kids are like jumping off the bridges over in Darling Harbour yeah, into the water. The we're not on the menu, right? Oh, you no, are. But this one oh, girl, she just got bitten like recently, and I think they she take lost a bite, part like, of her yuck, leg. Right? They usually don't. And through. she came off a jetty. Like and she was on a little jetty and she jumped into the water. And I don't think she was that far in. And a bull shark was probably lurking and it bit her leg. And then and then in Perth, across that bridge that you go to, to <laughs> uh, again, a bull shark took another person. Bull shark's so close to bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always think bullshit. And bullshit. That story's about the bull shark's bullshit. Hey, wait. Bondi <laughs> Rescue, you know that show? Oh, yeah. I love and it. Then on that show. <laughs> Oh There's my this God. thing called the green whistle. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm so obsessed. So I want to try the green whistle. It's this non addictive. It's like, have you it's tried like a, it? No, it's like a pla- You Have you? No. It's a plastic no. green tube. Yeah. And the people have like a dislocated shoulder. They're like, oh, I'm the worst pain ever. And they're like, oh. <laughs> like, they're so happy. Yeah. And apparently it has no hangover. It's non addictive or anything. And and it's just like it doesn't exist. I yeah. look it up online. They're like, Green Whistle? What are you talking about? On one episode, they even <laughs> suspected a guy of faking an injury so he could get a dose yeah. of the Green Whistle. Oh. That's just amazing. Australia yeah. get the Green Whistle. Yeah, you know, speaking of Magnetic Island, do you remember like we did a show and it was Halloween. Oh. And so everyone was in Halloween outfits. And during We Man, we, we were all on stage at the same time, actually. And yeah. all these girls got up on stage with We Man. And they were showing their They were all in ecstasy too. Yes. Everyone on the island. Yeah, it was basically a rave. Yeah. We were like just there to entertain the ecstasy people. And a girl got on her knees and opened her mouth in front of Wee Man, t- suggesting to she do. do something on stage. Yeah. And you know, nowadays everyone film has their phones filming. Wisely, Wee Man didn't fall yeah. for her. Because he had a sweetheart wild. waiting for him. Yeah, and he would have been officially a, a pornographic yeah, right there. Oh, on yeah. Stage. Stars. yeah. On stage. Yeah. But it was wild. What a wild night. What a wild place. But Australia's a little bit like, you know, they're a little bit more open. <laughs> they I are think. a little bit more open. Um, they're yeah. not like they're know. stun guns, though, are they? Awesome. That, oh, on the same yeah. night, that's when the, the authorities came after Preston for having the yeah. stun guns. Yeah, especially in Queensland. But they yeah. didn't do they gave him a thing. They let him off. Yeah. They let him they off. They gave him a citation or a warning citation. Yeah, they took it because he was flying around with it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fly, every day he was committing a crime by flying yeah. with a stun oh, gun. Oh, so meanwhile, Preston's flying around with a stun gun and I get pulled over for a little pair of scissors. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. A TSA or something? A TSA. And then the TSA agent like looked at the dude that pulled me over and she was like, you're a fucking idiot. And To the other TSA it. guy. Oh, the, the yeah, I'm not yeah. 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 Oh, no. Scissors, no. you fucking idiot. <laughs> no, the supervisor told told the guy that had given her a hard time. Because they were like... <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's how you can, like, see, you can get away with swearing power at your triple. own, em, like, employee. Oh, yeah. yeah. I Australians mean, are Australia, awesome. It's like, whatever. So laid back. That's why if I swear, it's because, like, it's just in me. Yeah. That's how That's how everyone talks. Yep. Everyone calls everyone. Yeah, everyone's, everyone just oh, laid yeah. back. Kind of the best. Can't, it just sounds yeah, different. It sounds I love it when my mom and dad swear. Yeah. Right? Oh. oh, he's a dickhead. Does uh, your mom say cut? Uh, she, she said it a couple of times, but she says it in a little accent. With her so Filipino cute. accent, yeah. too. Yeah, it's cute. She, she could say anything. She can cute. Say, oh, my God. Um, so cute. I like when she's like, oh, yeah, he's stoked. He's so stoked, man. 
He's so stoked. <laughs> but um, God, I, that just reminded me of some other Australia thing that happened. God, Magnetic Island and then um, Tasmania. Tasmania oh, was Tassie. awesome. Wow. <gasps> oh, I want to go back. Hey, that guy put us in one of the nicest hotels we've ever been in. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. That and you got you got you were pretty freaked out about that whole part of the trip. I remember we went to Tasmania and you're just like something's not right. Oh. It didn't seem like it, but it was. <laughs> yeah, it worked was out great. Fine. It was fine. <laughs> that was too good to be true. I thought yeah. we were gonna die yeah. a little bit. We were. Yeah. The, our show was. It was like our show and a haunted house was happening in the same place. Yeah. If you had to go to the bathroom, you had to walk through the haunted house. I'm like, no, don't scare me anymore. I just had to pee. Yeah. yeah. You had to like crawl was... through like a tent. Yeah. You had to crawl <laughs> so weird. to go pee. Okay. Because okay, I mean, this show was too good to be true, right? The guy paid up front. He was so nice. He picked us up. He put us in the nice hotel. I was like waiting for something to happen. Didn't seem to worry about promoting the show too yeah. much. No, he was cool. Went ahead and had a haunted house like at the other part of the venue the same night. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, we got paid. It was he was worked, stoked. It worked out great. I mean, it yeah. was it, it was, was awesome. There was something, you know, it was something coming, but it didn't never came. No, it'll come next time. All right, <laughs> it'll be the next time. Yeah. But you know, actually, the Pontius family is part of the University of Tasmania for the Tasmanian Devil Research. We oh. are honorary or something like yeah. that yeah so they, we're on the really plaque i think there because because um yeah because we we uh sarcophilus satanicus yeah. the tasmanian devil um we make the shirt of that so we figured might as well like have some of the money go to like yeah. help the tasmanian devils so so they are mean though right they're yeah. mean they're mean to each other yeah. when it comes to like meal time oh, yeah they're crazy they're pretty mean to you as well oh yeah yeah they, one of them tried to bite me for no not really any reason so yeah, yeah. they can be mean yeah. <laughs> they're the cool not name. big that name no. is a cool they're thing little. animal yeah they're little yeah. little guys i got bit by another animal in tasmania which well, is called the qual no the oh, qual well, but the nickname qual. after i got bit by him he's like oh i should have told you mate the nickname's nature's chainsaw <laughs> and i was like oh thanks but um, qual look like? Then, you know, qual, it's like a it's like a it's little like red Tasmanian devil, but a qual with just, a cute. I'm too late to say koala, so just qual. They're really cute. But you know, like a, is, everyone knows this, right? That they like it's a common knowledge. They all have um, chlamydia. Yeah. And then when we were in Magnetic Island, because it's an island away from the rest of Australia, they had a a group of them that didn't have chlamydia. So me and we man got to cuddle with them. Oh, oh you guys all took awesome. naps. Remember? Yep. Yeah. You guys were a little we're upset. Tired. But, yeah, because it was right next to the skate park. We're like, what's this? Like, koala rescue? And we went over the next thing we know, we're all holding the koala bears. That was pretty no, awesome. I think, like, you, Preston, and I, we were in the pool. I don't know what we Chill. did. It was but funny. We, I don't was, know where you were. You know, we were, we were tired. It was, yeah. it was a long trip. Everywhere we went, you guys would go to the, you and we man would go to the skate yeah. park. We, in, we in, went to 27 skate parks in 30 days. Did you go to a skate park where Justin Bieber went as well? I think he I was mean, in Adelaide when we were I in Adelaide. Saw no oh, Fremantle. Fremantle. Oh, Fremantle. Yeah, yeah. 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 We skated yeah. the Fremantle so, one around the on the ocean there. Mm-hmm. There was there was an article in the paper in Western Australia in Fremantle, and it talked about how Dave England and Wee Man were at the park ripping it up, but then at another um, later the next day, um, Justin Bieber showed up, and but his skating was not quite as impressive, <laughs> and they totally dogged on his skating, and oh, like man. we're like. But 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 you guys were ripping, yeah oh, yeah. That was a fun park. I remember uh, that would clearly, be so yeah. good to go back. Yeah. I think someone needs to take us back to Australia. Well, I kept getting oh, yeah. all cut up, and and I hated doing my laundry, so I was just wearing dirty clothes, all cut up from skateboarding, and we're traveling, shaking hands with everyone. And so I came home from Australia and got the worst case of um, staff, staff ever. And uh, oh, gosh, God. one on my elbow got the worst. I had to get go to the hospital. It went like systemic or whatever. Or stepsis was oh sepsis, sepsis. sepsis. yeah step, step yeah whatever step no, it was all over me and but it was a uh, like it would chew like cup loads out of my yeah like, it felt so good it was almost like my elbow was coming oh my god <laughs> Dave, you, oh Dave, yeah you like, you it felt like my elbow was coming I feel like every single time I see you you've got staph infection not anymore okay I struggled with him for a little yeah, while for a little while I was like man this sucks it's not worth really him yeah, right. after Australia Dave got staph. Yeah. I remember at one of those skate parks, um, a lady showed up with her kid. She pulled him out of school oh. so, oh, yeah, so yeah. he could was, skate with you guys. What was it, her name? Uh... I won't, she was Bob Rock's daughter. Oh. Um, Bob Rock, the guy who, who produced Metallica's Black Album, um, um, Def Leppard's um, Hysteria. Is her name was China? Guns N' Roses. Wow. Yeah. Her name was Asia. Asia. Yeah. Oh, that was close. Yeah. China, yeah. Asia. Part, part of Asia. <laughs> 
part of the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was Bob Rock's um, grandson. He was skating with you guys. He was, I was going to say, you said her name was Philip. That could be like Philip. That was yes. rad, though. Nice mom. Ty. Ty. Taiwan. Yeah. <laughs> like Tyler. Ty, Ty. Thailand. Yeah. What else is there? I, <laughs> Nothing. I wish I could. I, <laughs> Nothing. I, That's it. They're the only Asian countries. Ma'am. I could go on more about that whole story, but it, maybe it'll. Not. They get liability ish. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Sorry, <laughs> Namibia. <laughs> Dave and I go off sometimes to like Dave Land. Have you been? Did you ever go to South Africa during your snowboarding? I've never years? been to South Africa. Mm-hmm. The only place in Africa I've, I've ever been is Morocco. Only how, snowboarding in Morocco. How was really? that? It was fun. We went to this mountain called Oki Maiden. Oh. It was really big, and then it was really icy though. And then uh, my friend, who was the photographer on the trip, he's like Chris Runcart. <laughs> Who's passed away since, but he he's he's like trying to get a vantage point to take a photo with us, and he slipped in the ice, and and he slipped down, and first his snowboard went phew, over this cliff, and then he went over the cliff, and we on the chairlift up, it was like a two hundred foot cliff. We've seen it, so we're like Chris is dead, and uh, we're just like, what are we gonna do? Because we can't even go down there; it's so icy. And all of a sudden, he pops up with a snowboard. There was like a little thing oh. that he caught, and then so uh, with our snowboards on, we could get down to where he was, and then we had to go all the way down to this road, and. Uh, was he okay? He he had like friction burns all over him from sliding on the ice, oh. trying to stop himself. Oh no! Other than that, he was all right. And yeah, he got a little banged up. He landed on some rocks. Snowboarding oh. gets sketchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then I remember that we we ended up having to like because I was off the regular part of the mountain, so we ended up on this road. And this guy that was one of the other guys, Stevie Alters, who was a pro snowboarder, that was on the trip. He came with just a snowboard bag, no no luggage, nothing. Super impressive. And then so we were at the end of that road, and this guy was selling these big like stone eggs. And Steve, Steve's like, I'll take two of those. We're like, we got a lot of traveling to do. You probably shouldn't get those. And then, then everything, the rest of the trip, anyone tried to sell them, like swords, robes, anything he would buy. So by the end, he was just dragging all this stuff through Africa. And stone eggs. Yeah. Swords, like cousins. <laughs> yeah. Cemetery. Yeah, he had Have you everything. Have caught in an avalanche? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Have you, do you, yeah, what you know how to dig I, yourself out uh, and everything? We, we were on a snowboard trip in Russia. Uh-huh. And it had been snowing for like three days. So we'd been just in a cabin going stir crazy for three days. And so when it finally cleared up, we're like, woohoo, snowboarding. So we go to the top of the mountain and then we went out of bounds, which was the dumbest thing possible in Russia. Cause we're like, oh, it'll be cool. We'll come down this thing. And it was super avalanche slidey or whatever. Uh-huh. So, so uh, we had to take turns just going little bits at a time, watching out for the next person. And, uh, and each person, like four of us got avalanches that day, but my avalanche was along this cliff band. And I thought I could, like, you know, get around it in time, but it zippered. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but the snow was like, and I was like chasing the zipper. Oh my and gosh. And the zipper went way forward and the whole piece oh, of snow was on. Like this huge, huge, like 100 foot thing section just starts going. Oh, and then uh, and I knew that cliff you. was there. So I, I punched, I didn't even know where I got this idea. I punched both my fists through to the ice underneath. I had like all bruised hands and oh. anchored myself and didn't get pulled. And and then, then afterwards I couldn't even snowboard. My legs were like, like going this, like, just so like, freaked so out. Bad, like, I couldn't snowboard because I was so scared. And so we, and then, like I said, a couple of my other friends were on the trip. They'd gotten avalanches too. And we'd like bear, uh, dig one of the guys out. It was like oh super hectic. God. So we get down to the village and uh, we're like, let's get drunk. Uh-huh. So we, let's, we're going to drink a bunch of vodka. One of the guys had never drank alcohol in oh his my life. God. And we're in this little like peasant town. And he just started grabbing rocks and throwing them through everybody's windows. Oh and, my God. And uh, we're just like trying to tackle him down. We're drunk too though. But we're like, you can't do that. And uh, I think this like Russian gangster dude yeah. came out, out of nowhere in this big fancy like uh mercedes mm-hmm. or something and he's just like you need to control your friend oh yeah and then yeah we had to you know we he paid for all the windows and he everything. paid for his Good. damages yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> because oh. in, in the ambulance don't they in avalanche avalanche normally i have i still have my fake it's teeth eight. in by the way oh wow Look i got a, a temporary wow. bottom there's it's one big tooth wow. that's shaped like wow. like um teeth but just one so sometimes yeah. i have trouble with some words I'm going to get real. I have no excuse. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't they say like you swim through the avalanche? Oh, yeah. But you, you, yeah. you, 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 yeah. you didn't have the option because there was a cliff. Oh, like, oh, yeah, because I knew where it was taking me. Yeah. yeah. You punched yeah. through the ice. That's not a technique that's out there. Punched through Aaron. Yeah. Punched through the ice. So. Yeah, just... <laughs> that's great, yeah, though. That was, that was well, I'm glad that you made it out. Me too. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too. Um, <laughs> it was reflection. Snowboarding's gnarly. Reflecting on snowboarding. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> you you hate the snow, Chris, right? I I don't hate the snow anymore, but I don't really anymore. 
It's not that I hate the snow. I just like to say that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I see. When you're in the snow, you're not happy. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it's altitude I have problems with. It's okay. altitude. Yeah, maybe well, you shorts please. in the snow. No, no, I you have a problem with altitude. all the time in the snow. It's not the snow I hate, it's altitude. Like, if I'm too high in the mountains. Yeah. Like, and so the first time I met Dave, I was, like, super sick. Like, and I had to sleep in his house. How high? We Breckenridge. It was 10,500 feet vertical. I was living in Breckenridge, Colorado, okay. and I was so excited. It was 1995, and I was going to get to meet everyone from Big Brother Magazine. They were doing a tour. And uh, I, out of a friend of a friend, I'd been like, they can stay at my house when they're coming through here. So I'm like, yeah. oh, perfect. So like, they gave him my number and I was just waiting. I'm like, I'm going to meet Chris Pontius. And then the rest of them came in. I'm like, where's Chris? They're like, he's really sick. He's out of the van. And he's wondering if you have a place where he can just go where he doesn't have to see anybody. So I'm like, yeah, I have this little office. And I remember you had like a blanket over your head. Like you're just like, oh. You didn't say hi. You're just like, oh. You're so sick. You went in that room and you were in there for like two to three days. Yeah. Sickest I've ever been. come out of that room. <laughs> yeah. And I was all excited. Like Chris Potty's in my house and then by the time you, you were just out, uh, I really didn't get to But we later, we later. Yeah, we made up for it. Yeah, like, you punched him in the back of the head. Oh, yeah. That was a, <laughs> the time uh, that was a love the bite. Dip, <laughs> remember when you threw the dip can in my head? I said something stupid. <laughs> just, Point blank, just wow. Just, yeah. Just blood, just down I, another time, yeah, Dave made a, he interrupted my, my sentence or something like that. Something that, with a play on words, or something that frustrated me. And I, I just <laughs> instinctively threw my dip can and it spun through the air. And it like, as, as it touch, hit him, the, the ridge of the, the opener like cut right through his forehead. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, was it was like, you know, so ninja. that. I, I love this You're safe friendship. now that I, I that I it. no longer I chew tobacco. So much. <laughs> I do have a kukri right there. Yeah. But and with the two little ones. Yeah. I love the story also at the bar where you cut me. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. We talked about that on the last yeah, episode, I, I think. He's, uh, you know, I'm really. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're not talking I've, about I've, that now. You know, I've got a little bit of PTSD from every single time he pulls out a knife or a shotgun. I get scared every time he pulls out a knife. <gasps> man. Whenever he opens up like a, a new a new knife or a weapon, and he's still trying to figure out how things are, you know, working. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so sketchy. I just walk away. Someone someone did um, write in um, a question we we didn't really get to about if I any more stories of beefs with Aaron, and I really don't have any kind of beef with Aaron. No. I Aaron and I love each other, yeah. but mm-hmm. I did actually. It was jokingly at the beginning of Jackass Two. I did at the first day of filming pull a knife on him. And, and I wasn't intending to, I, it was just like. That was Jackass 3. It was Jackass 3. We were in that, oh, yeah, the 3D in that one. Backyard. And, That's right. Yeah. And it wasn't even my knife. I was just, it was just a joke, though, I think. But like, everyone made a big deal about it. And I think he was already having problems with, with another cast member giving him a hard time. Oh, <laughs> with Bam. With and oh, was, Bam. Bam called 911 on Aaron. Yeah. And it, it said, yeah, we're filming this movie and there's some guy on the oh, side. Stalker. Won't stalker. Loading, yeah, Stalker won't go away. All of a sudden, there's police helicopters and. It was really, like, it was, was really they're funny. They're here for and and Bam's like they're here for Aaron. I called them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're here for Aaron. I called them. Oh, that was a bad. Thing. That was it yeah. was really. Oh God, I got to work on my Bam accent. It was funny. I mean, uh, the whole situation. I it wasn't. I don't know. It was wild. Yeah, that was the first that. Yeah. filming for Jackass Three. And it was wrong of Bam to do that. But then for me to add, I guess me pulling out the knife. I was maybe I was just going to show him the knife too. Like no, you're, you're, you're like I'm going to cut you. <laughs> He, well, he attacked me. I had to, How did yeah. you meet Aaron? Um, he just worked at a skate shop in Portland. And I remember uh, just going to the skate shop one day and all the rest of the employees are laughing. And I'm like, what's so funny? They're like, see that guy over there? And they point to Aaron. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, we've been tying you, timing him. He's putting a skateboard together. It's been an hour so far. <laughs> <laughs> it took him like an hour and a half to put the skateboard together. So like, <laughs> that's that how you met first, him. That was the first thing I'd ever seen with Aaron. <laughs> Was a group of people making fun of him. <laughs> oh my god! Another group. Yeah. What well, One of the problems that happens with whenever like I've had a tussle with Aaron is like, you know when like someone starts a tussle with me and and then they don't back down like or they do something and then they don't know to like back down. He always comes back like oh, yeah. to like he's like a zombie. He's, like, and he's you know, a big dude that'll fuck he's big. You up. He's yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's huge. He's, yeah. And you know yeah. So instead of when like walking away like he should have, he challenges me. And so yeah, when he did that, when I happened to have the knife. That yeah. it just it was a bad look. And you have all the grappling skills mm-hmm. too. I think he did really great in the last movie. Oh, he was awesome. Yeah, he was no, so Aaron's amazing. amazing. He's rad. Yeah, VP, but it's not a player. Yeah, I mean, no, he was awesome. That was sport. <laughs> Aaron was amazing. Everyone on everyone on Jackass is so essential to it. Like it's amazing the chemistry that like yeah. brought us all together. Because yeah, it it's just 
Because you can't, you couldn't write that. Like it just happened. Yeah. Because like when it started, it wasn't like a bunch of people tried out for it. Like yeah, just imagine if there was, there's like an yeah. audition for Jackass. Yeah. That would be amazing though. It's pretty funny to think about. Fake auditions for Jackass would be a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. I have this really great idea for a bit. God, now I can't say it because we'll do it. Just get ready for a good bit. Yeah. Just sometimes. get ready. Yeah. If we, God, it's good. It's reason enough bit. to make another movie. You know what I, you know what I love Jackass forever. But because COVID happened at the time, it did shape a lot of the way the movie went for 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 and it, it, it for good and for bad. But just it did shape um, it because it, it you know affected like uh, doing pranks and so on. Yeah. And just for that reason, I think I would love to make another Jackass movie yeah. just because. Um, so when it's not a, a worldwide pandemic, yeah, I'd like to see it. I think it'd be completely different. And I have an awesome bit already written that I can't talk to you about right now. I think you guys all have oh, it's little such a bits. Good bit. It's oh, a, yeah, like we have, we have a little bits, stash just, too. I'd be very surprised if we make another one. Well, Dave, I was surprised the last time. Yeah, I've been surprised every time. Oh my god, I've got another bit. Oh, I've got I've got actually three on? amazing bits. Well, this other one was another one I just hadn't told anyone about. But yeah, yeah, jeez. I mean, that's why we ended up making the second one was because I when I we were Argentina and I couldn't drink the horse semen. Hey Dave, wasn't it you that cornered like um, uh, who was it? It was it was Knoxville and Tremaine. Did you corner I, them? I just, I just wrote endless emails to the whole cast going, "We have to make no, Jackass Four. I have to make Jackass Four. It was at that dinner, the dinner where there was like a a, a cat that got taken by a coyote. Oh, that, yeah, when, when um, Aaron was, was crying. Yeah, was, who else? What we were else all happened? gonna. All right, before Jackass Forever, uh, a while before that, we were all gonna get together with all the guys and just have dinner together. In a, I want to say it was 2016. But. And so, yeah, at the dinner, Dave was was um, a- asking about filming another movie. Well, I showed up actually late. I was in traffic. I peed my pants on the way because I couldn't get out of my car. And I showed up, and every, everything was really awkward. So, like, I guess, like, like the pressure, Dave's pressure about making another movie had gotten to maybe had gotten to Knoxville a little bit. Aaron was smoking a cigarette out front because he'd found out he wasn't going to be a part of our, <laughs> our Australia tour. That that we didn't have room, like it just wasn't financially viable, and we didn't think he wanted to he go found anyway. Out Jeff blurted it out. <laughs> yeah, and a coyote had just taken one of Steve-O's cats. Yeah, because we for dinner we didn't realize when we came in the door, we opened the door, and the you know he was he was really protective, not letting yeah. the cat out. But we didn't know that the cat ran out the road, and then it got eaten by a coyote right away. And <laughs> That's Scott, crazy dude. His friend Scott actually was like, a coyote's got your cat. Like ran in to tell him that yeah. instead of like. Doing something about like, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well. But yeah, the coyote got the cat. And, so it was a really awkward evening, to say the least. But and you know... In the end, the, the, yeah. the, that was what it was like. No jackass for. Yeah. <laughs> After all these omens that... Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the 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 reason we made jackass 2 was because um, on Wild Boys, we filmed the bit where we were at the, the horse breeding ranch in Argentina. Uh-huh. And I, I wasn't... Um, we couldn't air me drinking the semen. So when the f- talk first started to go around of Jackass 2 we're like we already have an amazing bit that we couldn't show on TV so why don't we just make a whole movie I still can't believe you drank that so unlike you it had to be done what did it taste like it tasted like you it I mean uh, it was so ropey it was more it was like it was so the texture texture was gnarly (laughs) it's not a taste I I kind of felt like a new ropey flavor horse cum (laughs) it was gnarly it was it wasn't (laughs) I don't remember the taste being particularly I don't remember, remember the taste that's ever happened. happened. You're the like, texture. you taste of the horse cum. You, well, taste, it, it, you tasted the bacon stuff. The bacon stuff. The, 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 the bacon, bacon stuff. <laughs> tastes like bacon. It didn't that's, taste good. I didn't, believe, I didn't believe that the pink cum was real because it tasted like soapy. The pink cum tasted better than the horse cum. I'll tell you that. fine. <laughs> like, yeah. No problem. I'm like, yeah, right. This is cum. I yeah. didn't believe it was cum until it started drying on me. It looks like getting all crusty. Just like. You're when you yeah. accidentally get a load on part of you. Like, oh, <laughs> oh no, you got know, itchy crust. It was like that, but all over me. <laughs> right. Yes, and then it started smelling like. That. But the taste, the, the taste of the pig, the pig juice wasn't that bad. The horse stuff was worse. Oh my god. And ropier. Oh yeah, you had way both. ropier. You had both. You can compare. You literally yeah. can compare the two. And as I described on another episode of the show, I accidentally sampled some of my own. <laughs> so <out of> the <laughs> three. After a, a couple of glasses of pineapple juice, and boy, was it sweet. <laughs> Oh my God. The horse didn't have pineapples. No. no. The, bacon, the bacon could have. The bacon. The bacon. 
The, but my favorite, I think I've told this story a couple times, but the favorite part for me with the cum, for the, all that pig cum that they got, because you know, like I got, they said it was seven gallons on me, and then they got wee man and poopies also, so that's twenty one gallons. Then mm. then uh, you drank some of it, and then uh, and then uh, Knoxville did the bowl trick where he pours it on his head. So there's like thirty gallons of pig cum. I'm like Jeff, where'd you get all this? And the Tremaine's like. Well, um, we found a guy who had a bunch of pigs, and we told him what we wanted, and he's like, yeah, no problem, but some 80-something-year-old guy, and, and he's, like, he's like, well, how are you going to get it? He's like, old-fashioned way, we're just going to jerk him off. And he's like, but, but but my arthritis is acting up, so I'm going to get my son to earn his keep around here. So this son had to jerk off all, enough pigs to get 30 gallons. Apparently, they shoot giant loaves, and their dicks are all curly. Yeah, they are curly. I had a pig as a boy. Just imagine that all the, how many days in a row the guys are just like next, next, next. Oh my god! I'm sure they shoot giant loads. So yeah, these guys because they don't have sex year round like we do. Yeah, like humans, his, like, that guy's like, dreams at night. Just, animals like, only dream do it during mating stuff. season, so they got to save it up. What's that? All right, animals like are only like you know having sex during mating season. They're not like humans having sex year round. And that's, uh, that's bad for their prostates. So they save up a lot of cum, I guess. You ever hear that? Like, you don't jerk off all the I've time? I've heard that, and I don't know if it's true or not. I like to think, like, yeah, I'm doing something healthy. It's, it's yeah. I, With the one nut weird. you've got, do you do you yeah. come normally? Like, not, like yeah, is it just yeah. normal yeah, amount? You wouldn't even know. Wow. Is it, like, in your testicle just works overtime? Or? Yeah, I think it yeah, goes into, kicks into overdrive. You know you know what? I'll, t- I'll Wait, show. How do you lose it, though? Snowboarding. Uh, ah. Yeah. No, snowboarding. Yeah, well, here we go. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, May, as a woman, like, you know, um, when you have a baby and you have to, like, when you um, have to pump breast milk or tell your breast will get sore? Woman, Chris. You, you know, it's, it's a good way. It's a good way to relate it, though. Like, oh uh, yeah. Like that's how, like, with with a man, it, 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 the idea of it, like, it getting sore in your testicles. Yeah, because I felt it like, up here because I wasn't like pumping enough when I, I, you know, when I had. We just got a sauna, and then Shauna, my wife and her friends. Sauna, Shauna. Shauna, sauna. So she, her and her friends, they had a big wine night, mm-hmm. and then they went in there at the end of the night because they were cold because they were sitting outside and the fire went out. Yeah. And one of them pulled out her boob. She has a baby, and she, you know, you like. Put yeah. the water over the rocks. She squirted her milk in there. No way. And Shana said that it smelled like freshly baked cookies. Oh. <laughs> well, what kind of cookies is Shana smelling? I don't know. I I wasn't there. Oh. Or was I invited? You, <laughs> One thing that kind you, of... You uh, drank Shana's like, meal tea. Oh, man. She used to like pump it out. She would put a red dot on it if she had any alcohol. Oh. So like there was all the... Oh, the baby can't have milk. this. Give it to me. And I would, I would freeze it and put it in my smoothies. It was great. Your smoothies. Yeah. It kind of... That, I loved it. I never even thought twice. I wasn't trying to show off or anything. I yeah. this is what really enjoyed it. It was really good. And I mean, think about it. Like I, you're getting milk off some random cow. Like random not cow. my wife. Oh my god! Fucking my ass kicked when I get home. So oh. Sweating over here. God damn it. This is a really good episode. Yeah. Uh, I forbid it to ever air. <laughs> Just don't grab the kukri. Oh, okay, it's, it's like getting warm here now. Yeah. Like the song. Oh, a great episode. Like, yeah. Someone you know, squirt some breast milk on the rocks. Oh my God. That's rad. I was at this strip bar once in Portland, Oregon, and the bar is shaped like a. It's called the Sandy Jug. The, it's like you go into a jug, like oh, like old, like um, like, you know, the jugs that people have moonshine in or something. <laughs> you go inside, and then you think you're like, I'm in this big jug. It's gonna have a high ceiling, but the ceiling is like more like a basement when you get in there. The ceiling is just like seven feet high, and and the stripper, she was sh- um squirting milk on everybody in the crowd. No way, yeah, the Sandy Jug. So all well, strippers have kids. Yes, this one have kids. <laughs> Not all, but yeah, it was pretty interesting. She was just squirting it all over everybody. Oh my Amazing. gosh, that's wild. That's a yeah, that, that's the only time a, I've ever seen that. That's a real Portland situation. Yes, if they if they that's were so, then you guys would be around freshly baked cookies. That's so gnarly. She was fresh. Squirting it was milk. not my wife oh, that okay. squirted <laughs> breast milk. It was some unnamed random friend. <laughs> <laughs> that's so gnarly that the lady was squirting. The, <laughs> the no, lady. Strangers, you know, yeah. Actually, surprisingly, it it comes out really like in streams, so you yeah. can go far. Oh my god, it was part of her striptease act. Yeah, yeah. And then but got you, home. Sorry, kid. No more for yeah. you. But you no do more have to. You. you do have to suck it out. And like, 
Yeah, 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 you have to, you, or you'll get pressure built up. I like the term pump and dump. Oh, pump and dump. That's the coolest thing anyone ever came up with. Pump and dump. dump it though. Well, if you just have the alcohol and you don't want the kid to have the alcohol, so I'd be like, don't dump it, and I would have that. Oh, so you, yeah. would you get like a bit? I mean, yeah. I think a kid would, but yeah, not for an adult. But yeah, if there's like little traces of you're alcohol supposed to. and you're a little baby, yeah, you could maybe get a little buzz, baby buzz. Baby, <laughs> a little baby dark, baby dark. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Baby dark butt plug. But yeah, like, that's what I was thinking of, like, I'm making it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Baby yes. dark butt plug. Also for sale. This is an amazing episode. How long have we been so filming good. for? Oh, oh, shit. Well, this is, it's most really of it's good. been keepers, too. Yeah. Um. God, this has been amazing. Dave's the keeper. This keeper. Is, this might keeper, be our best right? episode. You're keeper. You're definitely our best. Our, I'll, you, I'll say it. I can make fun of your Australian accent. You never heard me. No, you know, I I like it though. I I mean, because I don't friend, mean it in a bad way. I just can't. When I hear people, especially like Australians, I always want to try to do it. It's exciting. I love friends, it. Friends, you know, I gotta tell you, mate. The first the time I ever heard Dave's Australian accent, we had this back door to a phone sex line that someone that we worked with, um, <laughs> pre- to, before it, Big Brother that. previously had worked for someone who ran a phone sex mm-hmm. hotline, mm-hmm. and so and they were their job was sometimes was to like make sure that the their operators were doing a good job. So she had a backdoor number where she, she could listen to the conversation. So I remember you and I were at Jeff's house really late at night, and I just hear you on the phone yelling in an Australian accent like, G'day, man! <laughs> like, and so these people were a, a, a guy, a fella, had, a lonely man had called the phone sex lady to like, you know, have, have a conversation with her. And all of a sudden you barge in on their conversation <laughs> Like with your Aussie accent, like, G'day, mate, how's it going? And they just like, it was just awkward. I remember listening to it on the call too, on the other line. It was so funny. You remember I, that? I cannot remember that. For the the back of the board. You don't remember the backdoor number? No. <laughs> I remember that the time there was all kinds of stuff like that. Cause uh, you know, Big Brother magazine yeah. was, you know, before, right before Jack S and uh, the sister magazine, not many people know about was Blunt Snower <laughs> magazine. I was the editor of that, but we worked in the LFP, Larry Flint, mm-hmm. Larry Flint publications building. So there was like, Porn everywhere, and uh, within Hustler magazine, there was a section called Beaver Hunt, uh-huh. and then the guy that ran that, like, there was a guy that was his job, just running Beaver Hunt, and on his desk he had a big box of photos called Bad Beaver. It was <laughs> all the rejects. <laughs> like Beaver Hunt already was sketchy as hell, and then you go, I, I'd be like trying to write a snowboard story. I'm like, fuck this, I'm gonna go over to Tim's office and check out the Bad Beavers, <laughs> the Bad and Beavers, the ones that didn't make the cut. Like people that send in their photos that were just oh, so crazy, man. and it's crazy because a lot of the ones that did make the cut were still Bad Beavers. Like they're gnarly. And then weirdos would always show up at that building with like stuff that they wanted Larry Flint to see, and then they wouldn't let him in. But I'd be like, "Oh, hey, I'll well, talk to you. What, what do you have? You have an avocado, like an avocado that has a it looks like a vagina on it. <laughs> like I'll take. Larry, that. I love this. They always would bring you weird stuff. And <laughs> and then remember when when uh we, there was this dildo was a suction cup that we were like we would pull a prank. We'd go into the Big Brother's offices and like like I'd put it one time I put it under. Jeff's desk. Oh, yeah. When he pulled his seat forward, it, it like dildo went right <laughs> up against his desk. Oh, my God. And so to retaliate, he comes running in my, it, we were like in the fourth or fifth floor uh-huh. over La Cienega Boulevard. He runs, bounds off the desk, and then suction cups it onto the giant window, and the whole window flexed oh, out. Oh, my and God. He luckily fell back in, it didn't break it or anything, but it flexed oh, out. And then I'm like, well, how funny would that have been if, if he would have like, Launched out the window and then got a death grip on the dildo and then slammed ah, the dildo at La Cienega no, in Wilshire right there, just like dead with a dildo clenched in his fist. Sketchy. We would have never had Jackass because the director would be dead with a dildo. Yeah, and it would be your fault. Yeah, no, it my was, fault. He decided to no, jump. No, it would be your fault for right, putting that fault. dildo. Working in that, it would be everyone's <laughs> fault. Yeah. But you know uh, that other the guy that did run Beaver Hunt also his another job he had was to answer. There was these questions to some p- porn star of the mo at the time. The, the guy, you know, guys would send in and ask about sex and stuff. It was not that porn star answering him. It was him. And he had Tim, to write right? like a lady's Tim, voice. Right? Tim, yeah. yeah. Tim. He was awesome. He later on went on to become a very successful writer. Oh, awesome. But, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. He, it, was, it was him answering, not the lady like they thought. You would always buy those really weird magazines, like, in, in Sydney, in Australia, actually. Yeah, there was, like, it was, like, the one that was, like, people that were into boar Wild hunting. Wolf. But then also it was, like, pinup girls in it. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, what so many of yeah. them? Yeah, it was like kind of naked ladies with like, and they weren't cheap too. No. Boars and like twenty dollars. When were, we worked at they were really expensive. When we worked at Larry Flint Publications. They they're like, you can have as many porno magazines as you want. You go to this lady's office, and then she had all of them like on display. 
but you couldn't take the last one of any any issue. So like she's over there working, doesn't even look like she's paying attention. But as soon as you touch one of the last <laughs> issues, she's like, "Hey, I, not that one." <laughs> and then so you know, but you can take anything else you want. So I would load up duffel bags full, and I was living in Portland at the time, but coming down and working in LA at that. So like. I flew back home with this big double bag of porn, porn. and like I, remember, so like I was pulling it, like just just pulling it through the airport, and I got, I threw my back out, bringing <laughs> <laughs> so much porn home. Oh my god! And then I gave it away. I was a oh snowboard coach god. at the snowboard um, camp in in Mount Hood, and so I gave it away to all the other coaches. And then yeah. I'm like, man, everybody, all the dudes here are thinking about me when they're checking off. They're all jacking off. <laughs> oh my god! I was the, like, you're just a porn. hero for giving oh, all yeah. that porn. I was just like. Oh, Free porn. Here, how this? Yeah, because <laughs> porn was rarely available there. Yeah, there was no, and it wasn't like now where you can just go on your yeah. phone. There was no phone. No, no yeah, there was no internet back then. Yeah, <laughs> porn. You had to pay for it. Yeah, it was late. Oh Mid-90s. my god, Dave. Oh my god. Speaking of of that town, to go back to Geraldton, Australia. When we remember our drive there, we went to a gas station and you drove. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we went. We oh, stopped at the gas station oh. on the way, and oh my god, Dave took a liking to this display he saw for a sausage. Roll or something. Yeah, it Chico was. Roll. It was a. What was it? Chico it's for the Chico. Roll. It's the Chico hand holder. Chico yeah. hand holder. It was it's a like, hand. You know those things that here we have Seven Elevens and those things that roll like hot dogs and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was like something like that. That it was a very mystery meatish, mm-hmm. and it and it was a holder for it. It was like a hand to here like this, and you just put the little thing in there, and then you put this thing in the cup. Yeah, holder. it's a sausage roll. Yeah. Sausage. That's what it is. And you convinced yeah. the clerk to sell you Oh, she did not want to hand. part with that. It was oh. the last one. They had a promotion, but it was over. Yeah. And they had one file. To, I'm like, I need that. So bad. I just begged with her. Finally, 40 bucks, was it? 20 bucks, I think. I thought it was 40. Something. I think it was 40. 40 Australian. 40. 40 Australian. $5 <laughs> American. Yeah. The, 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 the money's colorful. It doesn't look like. <laughs> yeah. Play money. Monopoly money. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. we're doing these shows. Yeah. Take it all. Yeah. So anyway, so we get to Geraldton after he, he's gotten that in. Uh, about after we got to our accommodations, an hour or two passed, and I went over to to the the apartment that Dave, Jason, and Preston were sharing, and it was a little awkward vibe. And oh, Dave's yeah. like, "Oh, I think the guys are bummed at me because they saw this film. I mean, he shows me this video clip, and he'd used Handy. He he named the hand <laughs> to handy. pleasure himself <laughs> in the shower. Were you in that the shower? All the boys for were an sha- hour? the showering." think so yeah he was in there for like over an hour well all the guys were sharing that shower and so they they didn't like the idea of him using handy and i mean they're lucky i didn't use their hand (laughs) (laughs) i remember it was it was an awkward vibe but then every everything cleared up yeah Yeah. i mean you would have just used your regular hand i don't think it was them using handy it was just them the the mental picture that they had i guess i think it's because i filmed it and then made them watch it (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was was the issue i've uh, (laughs) Dave and his inanimate objects. Yeah, you always say that. You're like, well, he, well, you also told you me about turned on my inanimate objects like this surfboard right there. Cooper knife. Ms. King. Yeah. I always think this part is funny. Like, I always yeah. tell people this is this was based on yours and this one was based on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you get a little cute things like that. I wanted to mention. Oh like, I brought one of these. You, I've been playing with these since the eighties. Oh. <laughs> fingerboards yeah and and so i started making a documentary about all things fingerboarding awesome so i'm working hey, diligently cool on one. yeah that yeah. one's out of germany it's a black river they're the biggest company they're about to have their 25th anniversary and the world championship um fingerboard contest in bavaria germany wow coming up june 8th are you going yeah oh, hell yeah remember nice. in the the pal video entering, I, I, hey this is weird this feels really yeah it's strange. seven grip tape now they have that soft foam oh. so much easier on your finger yeah. that grips oh, better rad. yeah Remember that Powell video, Future Primitive, and it, they they made they had fingerboards yeah. that they're doing this. Like, you like, had to make them yourself, and there was actually an article in the Skate Magazine on how to make your own yeah. with toothpicks and all this. Yeah, in the before you know, long before let they were let manufactured. Me Let me see you do a trick. Come on. Oh, uh, under pressure. I don't know if I can do it. Oh. Uh, uh, come on, Dave. You can do it. Oh, hey, Jesus. Oh, Whoa. oh my God. Dave. Like three, that's sick. Yay. And that's so a new pressure. school trick. So much pressure. It was like a three sixty flip. You, Dave, uh, that's so rad. you know Dave's She's actually my killed. favorite. Dave's my favorite street skater. He was. Oh, I remember a, when you told me that. I was so he was. Excited. He was a street skater, like the first wave of street skating, like like the eighties, yeah. early eighties, yeah. like when when all the skate parks closed down, and that's when street skating was invented because there's nowhere else to skate. And so you know, right when people started figuring out like how to do tricks off walls, and 
And when you skate with Dave, he does all these rad things that you've never seen before. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why there was articles written about him and Wee Man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in the magazine. Yeah, that's magazine. so fun skating with Wee Man, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Best. Yeah. Because like, everyone just mobs Wee Man, so we'd go to the skate park at 6 in the morning, like, Nobody else is there and have the whole place to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he? So what fun. was his um, early dawn? What was his? Dawn Patrol. Dawn Patrol. Yeah. You did Dawn Patrol with him? Yeah. yeah. He used to sleep at the beach a lot too. Because remember that we um, we went down to Ventura camping. and. He... Oh, camping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not like a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little. Sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. Um, we saw you down over at Ventura that one yeah. time when you were camping. Yeah, I love it. And yeah. that beach was called Hobos, I think. Yeah, but it's like Hobo Jungle. Just so happy. That's called Hobo Jungle. I like that beach. Yeah. It's pretty rad. You used to sleep. And all this there. awesome stuff washes up on shore. <laughs> like, it's right now, it just flooded out. Like, oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it wasn't backwards. like when the storm came, like they had to like evacuate all like the hobos yeah. from the creek. Got evacuated oh, yesterday. Gnarly. Crazy. How is it? How is the um, the area up there? I mean, there's flooding, but everyone mm, thinks it's fine. Up. Yeah. Not as bad as the first one, right? No, yeah, but the sandbars cool. that the storm will create will create the best waves yeah, that we've well, seen in years. At the, mm. at the river mouth of Ventura, amazing the sandbar and the waves are wrecking so good right there. Oh wow! Yeah. Have you gone in lately? I I mean I always wait till after the yucky water's gone. Yeah. Like, once it when it rains, it, all the poop from the in the land comes mm. in there. It's all yucky and chocolatey, and there's like big logs floating and stuff. So I wait till that's all gone. You're so extreme, like surfing, <laughs> snowboarding, skating, fingerboarding. <laughs> right. <laughs> what else is there? That's it. That's it. That That's not the whole extreme. Dave is a, he's a man. Are. He's a man of extremes. Everything. And that's I what know. I'm mellowed out. I'm 54 now. I pretty much Whoa. just cruise. I do all those things, but not in a very. But he still manner. does it. Yeah, he's yeah. still rich. He surfs every chance he gets. Yeah. Yeah. I was a late life surfer though. I didn't start till I was 40. Yeah, I'm like a, I I go surfing. I, I take it or leave it. You know, I love surfing. Don't you get me can wrong. Not surf for so long and then just jump on the board yeah. and do. I don't even see how. I learned it at a young age. Yeah, it's kind of like when people are really good at the guitar that learned when they were kids. I learned late, late how to play guitar, and I just don't have that. But I learned to surf when I was like ten, you know, or like, yeah. Oh man, I wish I learned when I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really. Yeah, I got my first surfboard at ten. Yeah, remember when Jack has four point five and he jumped from one surfboard to the other? Yeah, I'd never tried that before. Strider, the pro server that was with us, was like, "Hey, one of you guys should try this," and I was like, "All right," and and then like I went for it, and I made it. Yeah, for I was try, so stoked. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, That's but awesome. yeah, like yeah, surfing's so fun though. Have you ridden that thing? No, th- because it's you know, the jackass thing yeah. on it. I got another board from there to ride, but yeah, this one I won't ride. Do you have one? Like yep. one of these? Yeah, mm-hmm. you ride I have it? the long one. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they had long. Actually, I gave it to Rita Kasek. Oh, you did. Yeah. She w- oh, nice. It to ride. How many fins do you put on your surfboard? Um, right now, I have a quad. I, I like quads have, yeah. too. You know why? It's like a skateboard with four wheels. Yeah. I like four fins. It's able kind of feel to it. Yeah. It's fast. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if our audience will understand our surf talk. Ta- our I surf talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're a couple surf surf, 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 we're a couple surfers out of California. Yeah. We're a couple. <laughs> I saw this guy like finger surfing and he was getting tubed. It was like, a, really? you know where they, they hey, surf. Wait, what? So, you know, like, have you seen those things where it's like, a river's coming to the ocean. It makes like a little wave, oh, a yeah. standing yeah. wave. Yeah. They, yeah, it was like a mini one of those. And he got out this mini little surfboard, and he's like, "Yeah," and then, like he fully got <laughs> tubed. Wow, that's sad. I'm just trying to, you know, bigger surfing is where I draw the line. But <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard. I, like I'm making a documentary about fingerboarding. I'm like, what should I call it? And everything, fingering, anything with the word finger. And I know that's like, it freaks me out. How are fingers so like? They're dirty. synonymous with things like just the, doing dirty things. Yeah. Fingers so, are probably so what, the dirtiest part so of the body. What are your what are your um, titles? Can we I, can we hear some? I, don't know, please? I, I was at first. I really wanted to call it "finger and destroy," but it <laughs> sounds like oh, something <laughs> bad is going to happen to a orifice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So I'm working on some other. Five. Okay? I call it wheels. Five fingers. <laughs> What well? What do you think about Lords of Fingertown? <laughs> <laughs> the Lords of Fingertown. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah I, I have high so hopes for this. Much. It's a really interesting um, community. The subculture of it is really cool, and the whole I, history I like of it, and everything about it is really awesome. You're destroying. You, you meet other fingerboarders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any there's more, like a whole community, more? all international. Was that? Oh yeah. Any more names? No, I don't want to like. I have, I have give away any three of them written down. 63. 63 possible titles. 63. Yes. 
There's that Some many. are better than others. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try to think of some later for you. Too. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll I put think, my mind to it. I think you should have a series, like a compilation, so that we can, you can use as many. Yeah. yeah. Different one, yeah. Oh, my God. Finger destroy two. Finger destroy. <laughs> Number two. Oh, I love it. <laughs> the, the big contest is called Fast Fingers. <laughs> and you also okay. have you also have a YouTube channel. Yeah, just Dave Ingley. Yeah. I can't yeah, wait for your documentary. Videos. I got to get some more. I love everything you do. Fingering David. And Fingering. you've been an amazing guest. Yeah. I, I cannot wait to see your documentary. I love everything you do. Yeah. And you've been an amazing guest. Me too. Fun here. It's, it's. Come back. I love. I might never leave. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can sleep here if you want. Is that okay? <laughs> you want to know something else something. that's interesting? Dave and I are both from the 805. Yeah. You yeah, guys are? Yeah. yeah. Far regions of it. You're so far. I can't believe it's still 805. Wait. Northern 805. He's from the southern. Yeah, it's the area code. Telephone area code. Yeah. It breeds a certain type of man. Yeah. And, yeah. and woman, I'm sure. It really but does. A, right? a certain type of person. Yeah. yeah. You can tell. You can spot another 805 from a mile away. Or to you, is an Aussie a kilometer away. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can grab my boo. No. You can grab my Dave England. Oh, my Dave England Devo. Do you? I love it. I always forget about that one. Everyone liked the. Grateful Dave one, and then that one wasn't as popular. I almost forgot all about that one. This one's really yeah, good. Yeah, I, I like it. I like, I like that one too. Also, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm real. I'm stoked on this episode because yeah. I, you know we we really missed you. We hadn't seen you in such a long time, and I I know you've been doing your own thing. Like after what well, when was the last time we saw you? When God, it has been a while. But I don't feel like this is an episode. I feel like we're just hanging out. Uh yeah, this is weird to be call it an episode. Are you sure it's an episode? This is kind of us just hanging. Our out, show's right? not I like the other shows. Actually running. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not like we're not, not like on. a we're not doing this like a regular talk show. It's more about hanging out. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Oh, next time we should eat Indian food. Mm. Oh, Dave. How about right now? Yeah, Dave loves Indian food. Yeah, like, how go. can you not love it? Yeah, it is really good. There's a really good masala place near our house. There's one oh in God. Ventura right next to the Black Hole Skate Shop, my friend's shop. Uh-huh. And it's called it's called Indian Rasoy. And so I'm like, what's Rasoy? I looked up and it just means kitchen. Oh. Indian kitchen. No, like or, Indian yeah. Christian really Rasoy. Yeah. Oh, my God. I remember what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, I can only do these jokes with you because you love play on words. I do. Yeah. You know when you were talking about beaver hunt? <laughs> I, I just remember a friend of ours saw his mom in oh, Beaver Hunt. God. What? Who? Someone no, I, dude, I can't say. A friend? Can wow. you, After the cameras can are you, shut off, I'll let you know. Wow, I can't wait to find out. He was estranged guess. from her for many years. Can you, can you and give he hadn't me the seen her in years. And then he was thumbing through a magazine while visiting us when we worked in the Larry Flood building. And he saw it. He saw his mom. What initials? I can't say it. Wow. Oh, was it too yeah. initially? Shut the cameras off. Yeah. The show's <laughs> over. Dave, thanks for coming. Thanks this is amazing. You guys. Thanks, Dave. Woo-hoo. It's so good to see you. Now to tell you the real juice. All oh, right. Tell us. Tell us. Who is it? Who was it? Okay.